Hi, my name is Johnny Alradi. Have you ever wondered how proteins are made? Well, to help answer this question, let's review a little bit the central dogma of molecular biology. The central dogma states that DNA is transcribed into RNA and the RNA is translated into protein. Basically, DNA makes RNA, makes proteins, makes us. The process of translation requires a lot of molecules. Chief among these are the three main types of RNA. Messenger RNA, which carries the message from DNA. Transfer RNA, which carries the amino acids to help make up the protein. And ribosomal RNA, which combines with a variety of factors to make up the ribosome, which is the stationary factory that actually makes the proteins. The ribosome, which is the workbench for protein synthesis, is actually composed of three distinct sites. The E site, through which the tRNA leaves, the peptidyl site, called the P site, which houses the tRNA with the growing polypeptide chain, and the A site, which stands for acceptor site, through which the amino acid enters the ribosome. To help illustrate this process, I'm going to utilize what I use in class, which are my magic markers right here. Now, what you have to imagine is the E site is on my left, I'm standing in the P site, and the A site is on my right. These arms are the tRNAs, and these markers are the actual amino acids. So the very first step that happens is the initiator tRNA lands into the P site. The E site is empty, the A site is empty. The next tRNA lands into the A site. The next thing that happens is a peptide bond forming between the two sites, with the result that the P site is now containing a tRNA that is uncharged, doesn't carry its own amino acid, the A site has two amino acids, and the E site is empty. All of this warrants the next step, which is translocation, which is simply the movement one codon, which occurs with the following results. The E site now discharges its empty tRNA, the P site contains the two amino acids, the A site accepts yet another one. The peptide bond forms, translocation occurs. I hope you're getting it because I'm down to my very last marker. The tRNA comes in again into the A site with the following consequence. All of this is catalyzed by energy and then movement occurs. The first amino acid is always on top. This continues on and on until a stop codon reaches the A site. A release factor comes in, releases the polypeptide from its tRNA, the ribosomes dissociate, and that is the completion of one round of protein synthesis. This process of translation is basically the same in humans and in bacteria. We chose to highlight the bacterial model of translation. Without further ado, here's the movie that my general genetics class at the University of South Florida has produced. We hope that it will make science students everywhere not be lost in translation. Several key molecules all had a plan to carry out the synthesis of a protein strand. In order to get started, the first ribosomal complex must be in place. The stationary factory is where the proteins will be made. With the components 30S ribosome, IF3, and mRNA, now we can finally be on our way. Without IF3, nothing can take place. It's the initiator linking mRNA and 30S at the base. IF2 also has a very important task. It allows the first tRNA and amino acid to attach.
The initiator tRNA recognizes start codon in mRNA and is able to bind at the P site for a temporary stay. Now the 30S and 50S ribosome units will come together as one. This will make our 70S complex and we can begin the fun. The first tRNA actually binds before the 50S, but choreographing the sequence proved quite a mess. So remember folks, when you're studying translation, we took some liberty in acting out initiation. With initiation behind us, elongation is next. Now to add amino acids we think will be best. An elongation factor with all of its might brings the next tRNA and amino acid into the A site. GTP's energy is all that we need to make this process go at hyper speed. An amino acid bond is formed between the P and A site. This is catalyzed by the peptidyl transferase ribozyme. The amino acid chain is now in site A. Soon translocation will be underway. Now the ribosome shifts one codon to the right. An elongation factor and GTP make everything all right. The empty tRNA is released from site E and the amino acid chain is in P where it should be. A new codon is now in site A which will be filled by the next tRNA. Codon and codon bases compare because they have hydrogen bonds to share. U goes to A and G with C. These couples are happy as can be. This elongation step occurs again and again, and now we rejoin the process towards the end.